payment of tithing as fire insurance. Nonetheless, the word of the Lord is clear that those who do not keep the commandments and observe the laws of God shall be burned at the time of his coming. Trav is Wayne Goodsall. Uh, there's not really any church news today other than President Reese is inaugurated and the church is going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs over it. Two articles on it. It's no big deal. I mean, they're trying to make it a big deal. He was once a college student, now he's the president of a university. I used to go to seminary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, early morning seminary. Now I'm the foremost anthropologist of the ancient Middle East. Yay! Nobody cares. See? No big deal. He's just a member of the 70. They rotate him out every so many years. God. So, Malachi, chapter 4. <laughs> I'm an anthropologist of the ancient Middle East. THE anthropologist of the ancient Middle East. Let's get in it. Malachi, chapter 4. Bruce R. McConkie puts, At the second coming, the proud and wicked shall be burned. It's the bicentennial year of the second vision. This is what we're talking about all year long. As double, Elijah shall return before the great and dreadful day. But you forgot something. Moses and Emmanuel. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19 is the Jewish Christ of prophecy. The man like Moses. And so every other Jewish author who writes about prophecies for the latter days, which is everybody, are all telling variations, different versions, often with different names, of the man like Moses. And so you look for patterns in the stories to the Exodus account of Moses. That is the template for your study of all scriptures. Because all the prophets from the name of God, who's the son of God, who was given up to the house of God, where President God was over the house of God, and the Son of God heard the voice of God and bothered God, whom God told the name of God <laughs> to ask the voice of God, what's up? <laughs> Just did that video, Samuel. And so, yes, it helps to know Hebrew, at least the name meanings. Google search can help out somewhat, but there's some errors, because Paleo-Hebrew got extinct by the time the Masoretes worked on the Biblical Hebrew text. So Samson, for example, is not son-child, it's son-god. And so, here in Malachi chapter 4, you see in verse 2, But unto you that fear my name, it's Emmanuel, shall the Son, Son God, ta-da, 
Emmanuel is the Egyptian sun god at noonday. And so there he is, there is Emmanuel. For unto you that fear my name, Emmanuel, comes from Isaiah. Shall the son of righteousness, righteousness is Zodiac. It may be one of the others. We can check Blue Letter Bible and determining, depending on Google search, I know YouTube was attacking me since yesterday. Apparently the failure of the hackers on Friday resulted in YouTube attacks all this week so far. The church just does not stop. And as I did the video, they are the worst criminal organization in the universe. Uh, Malachi 4. Oops. Malachi 4. NCIS had the Precious and Few episode. I did that video with the theme song in the description below the other day. Uh, yep, Zodic. Ta-da! High Priest. Melchizedek. So there's Zodic. The High Priest of Melchizedek. So Emmanuel is the king. Melchizedek. Right there. In Malachi. With healing in his wings. And so, yeah, Emmanuel, Amun, the sun god in Egyptian, is often portrayed with wings. I think I still have them in the current file. No. They did get transferred, so they're in the other file. Alright, and so this is after talking about the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And Joseph Smith goes into that and says, But the Christ, whom Joseph Smith describes as the messenger, Malachi, who comes to him and says his name is Nephi, because you're using the Joseph Smith papers, right? And is described as Emmanuel, the sun god at noonday. And yeah, don't listen to Trent. He doesn't study. He doesn't even use the Joseph Smith papers. Right, Trent? <clears throat> and so this is what Joseph Smith is doing. For the second vision, you got to pay attention. You got to do your study. Don't rely on a the anthropologist of the ancient Middle East to give you all the answers, even though that's exactly what I was looking for and nobody did it, so I had to become it. <laughs> After Fiskin failed me on my Idaho report, I didn't care about school. I wanted everybody to give me the answers and provide me with research books so I don't have to study. <laughs> but no! So, anyway. <laughs> and so, day that shall burn as an oven, Emmanuel. Healing in his wings. So that the calves are saved. Joseph Smith turns that into when, excuse me, when Emmanuel comes. Mormons need to hearken to him. Because when you plug in Joseph Smith, Emmanuel is the Mormon, born and raised in the Great and Abominable Church, to save Mormons from bondage in the Great and Abominable Church. Led by Lucifer. Exact same names in prophecy. That's who the names you're looking for. For the false prophet of the great and abominable church, 
Lucifer is his name. Thus Isaiah. Who knew? <laughs> because you're using the learning of the Jews. No anti-Semitism with any form of Christianity. And so verse 4. Remember the law of Moses. That's not the Ten Commandments. That's Deuteronomy. That's the law of Moses. And it's technically translated as the copy of the law or the repetition of the law. <laughs> but because it's a copy, it's the law. And so, what is the law of Moses? A man like Moses in the future. The day cometh. Ta-da! Malachi is a Jewish author, a.k.a. Malachi, messenger, doing his version of the Latter-day Prophecies. So, yes, Joseph Smith, likewise, as we're Latter-day Saints, uses this. The whole second vision is set up on the prophecies of the latter days, not about the restoration of the gospel, Trent. And so then, boom, I will send you Elijah. The J is a corruption in phonetics, but so is the Y. <laughs> it's the equivalent of Zeus, so the god Zeus. <clears throat> but, you know, you're not the foremost anthropologist of the ancient Middle East who deciphered Paleo-Hebrew and thus Greek and Aramaic and... and the learning of the Egyptians and the language of the Egyptians. And then with that knowledge, following the science, letting science dictate what comes next. Yeah, I learned that the Bible stories all come from Egyptian. Etc, etc, etc. And so Elijah is also supposed to come before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So Joseph Smith is Elijah. Because Elijah came to the temple, the Kirtland Temple, in section 110, along with Moses and Jehovah and Elishua, which is an error. It's Elishua. Elijah and Elishua come together as one. I was hoping to introduce with this and then go to Elijah versus the priests of Baal to show you how that is the Latter-day Prophecy, because that's who he's referring to here. I will send you Elijah, who did the Latter-day man like Moses stuff with the priests of Baal. So we can do it. We're only at 13 minutes. This is where you're already gone. So technically, I could stop here and make this a video all by itself. And so... Uh, Alter... Come on! Filled four barrels. Do a third time. Here it is. First Kings, which is Third Kings. Okay? Because Samuel is technically not Samuel. He's the king. And then the Jew, Jewish Tanakh, this is Third Kings. Which is why Joseph Smith Sr. had it listed. First Nephi, Second Nephi, Third Nephi, Fourth Nephi. What's in 3rd Nephi? The latter days. And his coming. 
technically on 8 April 2024 in verse 11 or chapter 11 the sign of his death 8 April 2024 the sign of his death the Jews gave us the dates don't listen to the redactor of the aka author of Matthew he doesn't know and doesn't want you to know because Constantine came out and said oh I saw the sign there it is we're done no need to look any further for a Christ. Signs given. But obviously Christians didn't fall for it. His kingdom collapsed and Christianity fractured into Protestant religions. Protestant Reformation. To fulfill the prophecy in Daniel. The statue of the different metals and and Christianity is the clay mingled with Constantine's iron and it was shattered and of course yeah the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints with the replacement of Joseph says it's their church it's Joseph's church and he's only preparing the way for Emmanuel in the latter days all right So we need to go to the beginning. I think it's No, well, we gotta go back further. Okay, here's a paragraph beginning. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? So yeah, Elijah is a troublemaker to the Mormons. Emmanuel, the Christ of Mormons, is a troublemaker to the Mormons. Plug in Joseph Smith's equivalencies. He answered, I haven't troubled the Mormons. I just do YouTube videos exposing the great and abominable church and trying to teach them a little Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian along the way. <laughs> but thou in thy father's house, if thou, if ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam, and you're following Lucifer, you know, following, looking for the Christ, and here I am right in front of you, because that's the God Yah. It's Emmanuel himself. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto YouTube. Mount Carmel. Utah, top of the mountains. Uh, 1 Kings 18, 19. Just doing my own personal thing. It's a Hebrew thing. It sounds Greek to you. <laughs> Westminster Leningrad Codex. Scroll down to 19. And... Carmel. Yeah. Okay, so it's two words. Cor and Mel. Interesting. Okay. And the prophets of Baal, uh, which has the sun symbol in it, by the way. He's the false Christ, the wannabe. He is Lucifer, pretending to be him. 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. Babylon the whore, the bride of Baal. 
Great and Abominable Church, the Bride of Lucifer, the President of the Great and Abominable Church. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, Mormons, gathered the prophets together unto Utah. Because that's where he starts his ministry. This is where he's starting his ministry. In Utah, 23rd September 2017. Revelation chapter 12. So everybody prophesies about it. Even Matthew gives the day and the hour right there in the beginning. And Emmanuel came unto the Mormons and said, How long are you going to halt between two opinions? Notice opinions. If I be your God, follow me. <laughs> Lord be your God, follow him. But he's God, El Yah. But if Baal, then follow President Nelson. I mean, um, obviously, it's the latter days. We know who they are. We're in the final year of the latter days. It's too late for you to cram. I gotta give you the answers. And now you're forced, as in Alma chapter 32 warned you about, not to be compelled in all things. Oops! You didn't choose between your two opinions. And now you're given the answers. And so you're under greater condemnation if you refuse to... Oh, you're not even listening. <laughs> exactly. That's all Joseph asked you to do. He warned you. That's the one and only one thing you had to do and you couldn't do it. <sighs> then Elijah, Emmanuel, said unto the Mormons, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, the man like Moses. See? But President Russell Marion Nelson prophets are 450 million or 4.5 million it says 450 men and it could be because it's definitely not over 16 million but we can still use that in a court of law for the sentencing 80 million years for threatening Mormons about the day that you'll burn as an oven. Pay them, or you're gonna burn. Pay us. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. And so, yes, the bullock is the Apis bull, which is used in ceremonials for the transfer of authority from the father to the son. And the son becomes the father, the father becomes the son. Superman. And so here you have Emmanuel versus Lucifer. Two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for themselves cut it into pieces, lay it on wood, put no fire under it, and I will dress the other bullock, lay it on wood, put no fire under it. Stars fall from heaven. This is the pattern, because this is from Moses, that story. And you're using Joseph Smith's decoder he got from me, to interpret this. And you call on the name of Jesus, and I will call on myself. And the God that answereth by fire, the day that shall burn as an oven, fire from heaven, let him be God. And so Joseph Smith and I are the ones who are saying, hey, this is it. Nelson, silent. He's leading you astray, keeping a sacred secret from you, but telling you, you got to pay him in order to be saved from the burning that he's not telling you a date of. So Mormons choose. All right. And so, 
the priests of Baal did their thing first and they began in the morning until noon that was their time period morning until noon who appears at noon Emmanuel that's when Elijah takes over and they're praying to Jesus there was no still small voice because psychologists have bullied Mormons into believing that they're schizophrenic if they hear a voice from the Holy Ghost. And so now it's a still small feeling. Even then, that psychologists have a way to pick on Mormons for that. They are bullies and the church fully embraces them as part of family services. I found the adoption video on the news when the church gave up on the adoption thing and there's a big scandal and... Yeah, the church was in denial. But, yep, they said family services is now going to threaten little girls who got raped to have the baby. <laughs> but no more adoption services for the church to give them to the good Mormon parents rather than a rape victim. <sighs> and they leaped upon the altar... Don't leap upon the altar. I remember in the Jordan River Temple in the Celestial Room after we finished a the session, there were the three witches of Mormonism who are always there in the Jordan River Temple doing this prayer thing <laughs> to the chandelier in the center of the room. <laughs> it got so bad that the, uh, the temple workers who are doing that shift when they're there are supposed to tell them to please leave. <laughs> there are so many kooky Mormons out there. Dear God. And so it's now Elijah's turn. And he's mocking Mormons. He's mocking Nelson. Cry aloud, for he is a god. Jesus is real, non-Trinitarian. He's either on his cell phone, or he's taking a piss. Wrong translation in the King James Version. you got to go to the Biblical Hebrew text and know Biblical Hebrew to know that he's taking a piss. <laughs> or he's on a journey. He's on a walkabout. <laughs> or per adventure, he's sleeping. He missed the latter days because he overslept. <laughs> Where is non-Trinitarian Jesus, Mormons? He was supposed to be here on the 23rd of September, 2017. Everybody prophesied about it. Where is he? He didn't show. He's not existent. Who showed? Learning of the Jews. And so Mormons are repenting. <laughs> They're causing a second physical pain to their bodies until blood gushed out. <sighs> so that's a dig on the Catholic Church. <laughs> who altered the Greek word and made it repent. It's change your mind. If you are not thinking correctly, if you're thinking about non-Trinitarian Jesus, change your mind to the learning of the Jews Christ that Joseph Smith says is a Mormon, one of you who's mocking you. All right, my turn. <laughs> this is noon. The noonday sun, Emmanuel. Come near unto me, all ye people came near unto him. Watched his channel for conference. And he repaired the altar, set in order the house of God. Section 85, verse 7, the one mighty and strong. 
because the temple needs to be restored. No more magic underwear, no more loyalty oaths to the prophets. With death to America and polygamy, incest, rape, child, bride, polygamy. You do know, you, you follow me, right? You've seen the videos. You know what I'm talking about. Which, yeah, if you're listening, you do. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> I'm still talking as if Mormons are actually still listening and not offended because I'm fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> I used to do these challenges on my website and even on YouTube way back in the day, in 2017, 2018. Had the thumbnail set up with the Elijah scene, the priest of Baal, and then the key of seer, the key of revelator, the key of translator, the key of prophet, going after Nelson, who, nope, nothing, taking a piss <laughs> on walkabout, <laughs> sleeping. All right, so, takes 12 stones. Urim and Thummim. It's the breastplate. It has 12 stones in it for the 12 tribes of Israel. And so, yeah, this Joseph Smith, perfectly in harmony, but he had no involvement in the composition of the Book of Mormon. It was Joseph Smith Sr. and Sidney Rigdon. And only senior, because junior had Martin Harris steal the 116 pages, so they had to be rewritten. And Sidney Rigdon, you know, he, no, it had to be Smith, because he was the one working with William Morgan in the first place. Had the duty and responsibility to make sure the book got finished and published. <clears throat> and, yeah. According to the twelve tribes of the sons of Jacob. See that? Unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. So they're directly referring to the book of Genesis. So 1 Kings was written after Genesis, after the law of Deuteronomy, after the Exodus, with the pattern that he's following here. <clears throat> and, uh, and since it's 3 Kings, yeah, it's King David Moses of the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Just so that you know. Uh, and so, yeah, he, he's making it literally impossible to happen. He's putting a trench around and he dumps seed in. And then he put the wood in order, cut the bullock in pieces, laid them on the wood. And then he says... Fill full barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice. It's going to be impossible. It's not going to happen. It's impossible. And then he says, that's ah, not enough water. Do it again. And the third time. And now we get to the evening time. The latter days. See, Mormons had their opportunity in the beginning with Joseph Smith until noon when Emmanuel comes and takes over. And now it's the latter days. The evening tide. And so three time periods. And it's also for the three days of darkness this year, the bicentennial year, the final year, is the second day of darkness over Utah. 
in Virgo, the church constellation. Not a coincidence. And then he says, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Because that's from the prophecy of Moses, the man like Moses, is that he will speak whatever comes to his mind and his heart to warn the Mormons, just like this video. <clears throat> read my lips, O oh Lord, read my lips. Hear me, O oh Lord, hear me, that Mormons may know that God, the real God, is real. And I've done the videos for you. There have been sun shall be darkened, moon turned to blood, stars fall from heaven with the death of every single president of Brigham Young's church. That is not a coincidence. And it wasn't me. Now, maybe the prophets knew and they purposely had themselves murdered. Is that true, Nelson? Did you murder Monson to fulfill that pattern? Hmm. And if they want to come out and confess, yeah, that's fine. Then there is no God. But the name Lucifer for the head of the great and abominable church and Emmanuel for the man like Moses Christ of Mormons. Definitely by God. There is no way the parents knew, let alone being descendants of who they are. Especially Emmanuel, everything prophesies about him all through his whole life. You look at Matthew and you think, well, where's the missing years? You got to go to other prophecies, even those that are not in the canon by the Trinitarian Christians. Everyone prophesies about him. Everyone has a different story to tell. And so the book of Jasher, yeah, for example, talks about Moses as a young child who takes the crown off of Pharaoh's head, puts it on his, and Pharaoh says, kill the beast. <laughs> and the priest says, he's just a child. Give him a break. Let's test him. Let's put out a jewel and a hot burning coal. Day that shall burn as an oven. And if he chooses the jewel, okay, fine, we'll kill him. <laughs> if he chooses the hot burning coal, he's just a kid. Let him be. Let him grow up to replace you. <laughs> and so, yeah. He picks up a hot burning coal, sticks it on his tongue, burns his tongue. That's a prophecy. I can guarantee you it happened. Because Father Emmanuel was cooking stroganoff at the scout camp and uh, one of the charcoals rolled out and yeah and son Emmanuel picked it up blistered his finger they don't mention that in the story of Jasher that's a correction or an addition to correct the record so everything are prophecies And, yeah, and then uh, it happened.
the day that shall burn as an oven happened and burned the Mormons and destroyed the great and abominable church once and for all. And there is drought. This is the water shall be divided and passed through on dry ground from the Mosul story. It's the drought that happened in 2020. But this year is the year that shall burn as an oven. And when all the Mormons saw it, their countenances fell. And they said, oops. <laughs> Jesus Christ was destroyed. Do we even have authority? And so Elijah said, take the prophets of the living non-Trinitarian Jesus who was sleeping and don't let him escape, locking him up for 80 million years. <laughs> there you go. And so, yeah, the Deuteronomy passage has in verse 20, that prophet shall die. Section 85, the one mighty and strong. Verse 8, that prophet shall die by the vivid shaft of lightning. Jupiter, Emmanuel. As a tree smitten, so yeah, this is the fall of the great and abominable church. There you go. And so, yes, other stories. He's buddies with Elishua, which is the god of salvation. And they're parting the river Jordan and passing through. Everybody does it. No big deal. And thus the symbolism of women, which I keep telling you about. Alrighty, so you got two in one. And nobody's listening.